this is Isaac here and today I'm going to be reading for you The Owl Goes on a Holiday by Ulf Stock and Anne Catherine Sigurd Stalberg. The Owl Goes on Holiday By the big stone on the oak tree, the owl gives school lessons to the children of the forest. He does this every morning before going to bed, because owls sleep in the daytime and are awake at night. Today, the children have picked le leaves, needles, and pine cones from the trees. They've also held paws and wings around the oak tree to see how wide of it, it is. As wide as all of us put together, says the owl. My, dad, my granddad is quite wide too, says the smallest little mouse. But the oak tree could live for over a thousand years, said the owl. I don't think your granddad could, or me. They all laugh at that. Then they dance around the oak tree, because dancing is so much fun, and because you learn a lot better when you're having fun. Really beautiful illustrations, isn't it? Now the owl stands on the school stone and shows the class a leaf. Does anyone know what this is? Can I have a look, please? Says the hare, stretching out his paw. He takes the leaf, puts it straight in his mouth, and eats it up. A maple leaf, he said, licking his lips. Correct, says the owl, but you mustn't keep eating what we're learning about. Sorry, says the hare. I was so hungry. So am I, said the little girl squirrel. And she jumps up and grabs a, grabs a pine cone the owl was just going to show the class and starts gnawing on it. Yucky pine cones, said the fox. I much prefer flies croaks the frog. frog. Snails, says the hedgehog. Spiders are quite nice, says the magpie. I was going to say hares, says the fox, leering at the hare. Different animals like to eat different things, says the owl. Personally, I like us, squeak the mice, and they jump around squeaking, ha ha, you're not allowed to eat us up. Not while we're at school, because that's the way of things. At school, everybody has to be kind to each other and not eat each other up. Now I think it's time for you to do some exercise, yawns the owl. Oh, move around as much as you can. The owl is tired. It is fun that the children are so lively, but it's also very tiring, especially if you had not had much sleep. And the owl has not been sleeping well at all. For several days, the, a woodpecker has been pecking away at a fir tree next to where the owl sleeps. And owls have excellent hearing. Imagine if, if I could have just a few days off, he thinks to himself. He looks at the mice, who have found an acorn and are playing football. The hare jumps over the hedgehog, and the squirrel jumps around from tree to tree. In a while, I will teach them to count to four, he thinks. And then he gives another big yawn, oh, and falls asleep. Wake up, Bow! calls the magpie. Ah, ah! Hoo hoo! hoots the owl. What's the matter? You fell asleep, says the magpie. School has finished. Everybody's looking at him. The pupils and the parents who have come to take him home. He has never fallen asleep in a lesson before. 
I'm so sorry, he says. I must have dropped off for a few minutes. That's it for today, thank you. You can go home now. Excuse me, says a mummy mouse. But I'm not very good at counting. Are all four of my children here? Yes, they are, says the owl. Let's see. One, two, three, four. And off she and the other parents go with the children. Only the magpie stays behind. You should have a rest, she says. You should go on holiday. Holiday? What's a holiday? Wonders the owl. Don't you know? Calls the magpie. Ta-da! Ta-da! Not really, replies the owl. So the magpie explains. Holiday is when you fly off somewhere else. Rest, have a good time, and just do nothing in particular. Just sleep, eat, and have fun. That sounds nice, sighs the owl. But how will the young animals learn anything? I can be the teacher, suggests the magpie. You? What are you good at? Oh, various things, says the magpie. It certainly would be nice, says the owl. But you must make sure they learn to count to four and build a nest. Trust me, have a nice sleep today and you can set off this evening. Before the owl creeps into his hole, he puts four sticks next to each other by a school stone. This is four. See? One, two, three, four. Just so you don't forget. Okay, pause the magpie. And that evening, the owl sets off. He flies to the other side of the forest, where he finds another hole, smaller than his usual one, but it's only a holiday home. When he has finished eating, he sits on a branch and enjoys doing nothing. He breathes in the smell of the forest. He sees the bats swooping by. He hears the mosquitoes buzzing. In fact, he can even hear a Fire weaving its web. Because, as we know, owls have excellent hearing. How lovely and restful it is, he thinks. I think I'm going to enjoy it here. Good morning, children, calls the magpie the next morning. I am your new teacher. But where's the owl? wonders the hare. He has gone on holiday. Let's get started. What are you learning today? asks the squirrel. Today you are going to learn how to build a nest, says the magpie. I already live in a little passageway underground, says one of the mice. But now you're going to learn how to build the best nest of all. A real magpie's nest, calls the magpie proudly. Ta-da! Everybody helps out. Moles and mice fetch small twigs. The hare and the fox bring big branches. And the frog carries mud for the floor. The magpie shows them how the branches should be put together. They have to really do it properly. Otherwise, the nest will break. When the lesson is over, everybody is tired but happy. Now you have learned to build a real nest, says the magpie. The fox says it would rather live in its den. The hare wants to carry on living in his lovely sleeping burrow under a bush. The squirrel loves her own nest, and the mice have their underground tunnel to live in. But the children are still happy when their parents come to collect them. They had a lot of fun. They have learned to work together and that all animals want to live in their own kind of home. The fox and the hare and the frog are all helping out. Are all four of my
my children here? Asks Mummy Mouse when she is leaving. The magpie looks at the sticks when the owl, the owl put on the ground. Then he, she looks at the little mice. Same number of sticks and mice. And the owl said that was four. Yes, they are, said the magpie. Everything is all right, but it isn't all right. When they were building the nest, one mouse actually accidentally took one of the sticks for the nest. So now Mummy Mouse is going home with only three children. The smallest one has gone missing. He got lost when he went off to fetch a twig. The owl is having trouble in his sleeping in his new hole. He thinks it's a shame to be sleeping when he's on holiday. He thinks about how nice it is to not have the mice squeaking, frog croaking, Woodpecker pick. This is really, really nice, he thinks. I don't have to work. I can just do what I like. The trouble is, he doesn't really know what he wants. All day long, he thinks about what he wants. All night long, he flies around thinking the same thing. He looks at all the same things he looked at when he first arrived, but he doesn't feel as excited anymore. Until the sun rises over the tree tops, he realizes what he wants. He wants to get back to his school children. This morning's lesson has begun. Today, the magpie wants to teach everybody to fly. Some already can. Others have no idea what to do. You really have to flap a lot, the magpie explains. One by one, they have to stand on the school stone. Don't be scared. Jump off and flap as hard as you can. The hare tries to flap his ears, and the fox tries to spin, flap his legs, and the little mice spin their tails round and round, just like a helicopter. But they all just fall as soon as they jump. They laugh at that. Because falling over is fun. <laughs> Do you think these animals can fly? Just then, along comes the owl. How clever of you. He says to the magpie, I see that you are teaching the children that no one can do everything, but everyone can do something. The hare can't fly, but is really good at hopping. The hedgehog can't hop, but is very good at being prickly. Just then, the owl sees the big magpie's nest they have built. And what a lovely schoolhouse you built. Now we can be indoors whenever we like. Oh, I'm so happy to see you all again. But where is the smallest mouse? The smallest mouse, calls the magpie. Ta-da! Ta-da! Yes, where is he? Did you count to make sure Mummy Mouse collected all her children yesterday? Yes, I did, said the magpie. There were as many little mice as there were sticks there. Oh dear, says the owl when he sees the three sticks. I must fly off and start looking straight away. He flies over forest glades, streams, and meadows. Al has excellent eyesight and can zoom in on a single blade of grass when he is the quietest of mice. Just now he can hear someone laughing, someone with a very nice voice. It's the smallest mouse. He has been slipping in a pile of leaves, and he has found a dead fly in a spider's web, which he has feasted on. Now he is lying on the ground, 
tickling himself on the tummy with his tail because he doesn't like to be bored. Whoo, there you are, hoots the owl. My dear naughty people. Carefully, he picks up the mouse with his claws and he flies back to the school. What lesson are we going to have now? wondered Chilton when the owl returns. We are going to have music. We are celebrating because we have a new schoolhouse. I am back from my holiday and because we have found the smallest mouse, says the owl. And they all go into the schoolhouse and sing as loudly as they can. It's all except the smallest mouse. He is hanging upside down from a branch by his tail. He is swimming back and forth and thinking, what a good job the owl found me. Tomorrow I'm going to learn to count to four just to be on the safe side. Which is the end of our story. Bye for now.